Hi there. Congratulations for clearing your level one. Uh, we'll be starting with level two, and the subject that we'll be we are starting right now is derivatives. You may as well start with some other subjects. That is completely up to you. But yes, uh, we are going to talk about derivatives, and there are two readings in level two for derivatives. All well, right, the first reading that we are going to talk about uh, in this particular reading will be having a lot of different contracts. We'll be talking about forwards. We'll be talking about futures. We'll be talking about FRAs. We'll be talking about swap options. All right. So there are multiple. Uh, derivative contracts that we are going to talk about but at the very same time what exactly are we going to talk about in these contracts is how to exactly calculate the price of the contract and at the very same time how to calculate the value of the contract all right so we know that there is a difference between price and value when we talk about derivatives so price is something else value is the profit or loss that you are you know calculating on the whatever position that you are holding so starting with the first chapter as i told you we are going to talk about the pricing as well as the valuation of the forward commitments that we generally have all right forward commitments include your forward contracts your futures your frs all right all these things we have in our forward commitments so i'll start with the basics first i'll cover a lot of things that we have already done in level 1 so the first thing first that i'm going to discuss with you guys is about uh, you know what are forward contracts what are the positions that we have in forward contracts and at the very same time how do you make value out of forward contract All right, so we all know there are two positions in in a forward contract. There's a long position as well as there's a short position. So the long position that we have in a forward contract is nothing but the person who agrees to buy at a particular date at a uh, for uh, for a given for a given price level. So for example, there are two people, person A and person B, and if the person A is going long forward, so he is agreeing to buy a particular commodity or could be any security after a certain period of time at a particular price. from the person b all right so this is something that we need to understand that person a if he is going long he is agreeing to buy something after a point in time at a particular price and the contrary person is person b who is ready to sell after a particular point in time after a certain period of time at a particular price so person b is going short and person b is going long so they are agreeing to buy and sell something at a particular price after a certain period of time so that is exactly how forward contracts work there is a long party there is a short party both of them are agreeing into a commitment and they both will have to fulfill their commitment after the time passes by so here we need to understand that it is a commitment nobody has an option both the parties have to do what they agreed at time period 0 all right so that is uh, the difference between long party and short party in a forward contract long party is basically agreeing to buy something and the short party is basically agreeing to sell something all right example we have already discussed there are two people person a person b all right person a has agreed to buy something if he has agreed to buy something person b would be selling something the person who is agreeing to buy is nothing but the long person and the one who is agreeing to sell is nothing but the short person all right so this is how exactly it works around quite simple quite intuitive to understand all right uh, person a would be entering this contract given that he is thinking that the prices will go up and person b is agreeing to enter this contract because he is thinking that the prices will go down say for example uh, they both have agreed into a contract that a would be buying a certain asset from b at dollar 100 after 3 months all right so person a would be buying the asset from person b at dollar dollar 1000 for that matter after say for example 3 months now say for example after 3 months the current price or the spot price i would rather say of that particular asset is 1100 dollars all right is 1100 dollars so who is gaining here person a is gaining here you must have guessed it right by now person a is gaining here why is he gaining here because he, ha- he he has entered into a contract whereby he could purchase that asset from b at 1000 dollars so he'll get the asset for 1000 dollars and he'll be able to sell that asset for 1100 dollars all right because in the open market you can sell it for 1100 dollars that is the price and you can make a gain of 100 dollars out of this and you can make a gain of 100 dollars out of this given that the prices have risen so person a who is going long gains when the prices go up all right so that is how exactly it works around and if the prices would have gone down to say for example 900 dollars so think from the perspective of b here that he has agreed to sell the particular asset at 1000 dollars all right 
irrespective of whatever the current market price is so at thousand dollars he'll be selling it to b what he'll do is to sell it to b uh, to sell it to a he would buy the asset at 900 dollars from the market and sell it to b and gain thousand rupees again 100 rupees so here we need to understand get that the, if the prices go up the long party gains and if the prices go down the short party gains this you must have understood very well in level one i'm just repeating what we have studied so far all right uh, the good part about forward contract is you do not really have to pay anything at initiation this is just a contract in which you need to enter the settlement really happens after the expiration so that is something that is the good part uh, on the other hand in futures you really need to pay the initial margin all right so there is some amount of money that is going out of your pocket at time period zero however uh, given that you're paying that initial margin in futures you are also making sure that there is no probability of default or, it, or there is no or very little probability of default in futures whereas in forward contract there is a probability of default because it is an OTC contract it is an over the counter contract there is no exchange there is no clearing house involved in the middle alright uh, we all know the pricing of the forward contract for example I had written thousand dollars here well, that was just an example but how do you exactly calculate this price of thousand dollars it is based on a no arbitrage principle all right so that no arbitrage principle is you cannot really make anything at time period zero all right at initiation you, sh you should not be able to make any profit or loss uh, given that you are entering into a contract it should be the value of the contract should be zero for either of the parties that we are talking about all right so that is about the no arbitrage principle when we talk about the assumptions here all right there are three main assumptions that we generally follow there is no transaction cost involved there is no prohibition on short selling you can short sell as much as you want and at the very same time you can borrow or lend unlimited at the risk period all right this provision is available for uh, both the parties the long and the short party all right that, uh, that you can borrow uh, limitlessly uh, at the risk period so these are something that we already know uh, how do you really calculate the forward price the formula is pretty simple all right we generally start with the spot price and multiply the risk free rate uh, to the power t uh, if there were any cost involved would have added that and if there were any benefited uh, benefits involved would have subtracted that all right however i am simplifying the assumption here i am making sure that there is no cost or benefit involved just to make our lives easier and you know to make our calculations simpler so there could be some cost involved say for example if it was a physical commodity there could be a, there could be some storage cost that could that could have been involved uh, or say for that matter it could have been a uh, security for example stocks there could have been dividends or it could or for example if we could have bonds in that case you would have coupons so there could have been the case it could have been the case where we would have uh, benefits but we need to understand that there is no cost or benefit involved as of now to make sure that our calculations are done in a simpler manner so on those lines i have taken an example i would want you to calculate the number for me i would want you to calculate uh, the forward price for me all right there is a bond whose uh, face value is thousand dollars the current spot price is five hundred dollars all right it is a zero coupon bond the risk free rate currently is six percent i want you to calculate the forward price and what forward price three months forward price you start with the spot price that is five hundred dollars you multiply the risk free rate that is 1 plus 0 0.06 let right, you multiply the risk free rate that is 0 0.06 to the power t now t here is 3 months all right 3 t here is 3 months so that is 3 by 12 so that will be 0 0.25 all right so in the power it will be 0 0.25 so you have to multiply 500 into 1.06 to the power 0 0.25 is equal to this much all right so calculate this number for me and make sure you have it written all right fill up this number uh, it's quite simple the whole idea of calculating the forward price is based on the model that is cost and carry model all right that model governs this particular price of forward contract that we generally calculate that is spot price into one plus rf to the power t if there were any cost involved would have added that if there were any benefits involved you would have subtracted that all right uh, you would have definitely taken their present values so that is something that we have already done i'm not touching upon that uh, next thing that we need to understand is what if this price or this equation doesn't follow all right what if the equation of forward price is equal to spot price into one plus rf to the power t does not follow in that case you can have either of these two situations you could have the forward price greater than spot price into one plus rf to the power t or you could have forward price less than spot price into one plus to the uh, one plus rf to the power t all right there could be these two situations whereby the forward price is overpriced or it is underpriced 
all right so what exactly you'll have to do in this situation or how exactly you can rather i would say exploit the situation uh, and gain those arbitrage benefit out of it because at the end of the day the price you know should follow this equation and in case if it doesn't you can definitely exploit it and you can gain uh, out of it and it would be a no risk no risk gain it would be an arbitrage profit so how exactly do you do that uh, we'll be doing that in the next video with an example with some numbers involved but what you need to understand here is how exactly it works around all right so if this thing happens we are violating the new arbitrage principle and there could be some arbitrage gain that we'll be able to see for, from the entire transaction that will be forming uh, together so that is something that we need to see but i am hoping that you are now able to recall forward contract as well as future contract for that matter and now we'll be able to see how exactly the pricing works and what if the no arbitrage principle uh, is not followed thank you